Hi everyone. I have a sinus infection, which you can probably hear. Uh, I haven't stopped blowing my nose for about three days. Um, so I figured I would make this little YouTube video uh, instead of coming to class and infecting everyone else. So I'm presenting the Kingdom's Three Streams model. It was one of the big approaches that we talked about in my undergrad policy class, and it's really important to understanding all of the other stuff that we're reading, because a lot of it is kind of responses to this or alternate theories to this one. Kingdon was kind of the first guy to really put this out there. So in this model, we get the three streams that Kingdon believes policy must thro flow through to get on the systemic agenda and ultimately get law put into place. The streams are the problem stream, the policy stream, and the politics stream. So the problem stream. When is a problem a problem? Uh, he says that we get indicators, uh, what's going on, who has issues and with what, how do issues become the focus of government policy. One of the big ways is through focusing events. When we get crisis and disasters, like Hurricane Sandy focusing the governments of New York and New Jersey on flood preparedness and in refreshing um, the subway system pumps that were from the turn of the century. Or something like Proposition 8 passing in California and the subsequent court cases and the battles around that. That was a big rallying point for their politicians. Um, and then there's feedback with what happened once the corrective policy was put into place. I think that was big with the Proposition 8 the policy, the uh, gay marriage policy in California was put into place. People didn't like it, and people reacted to it and sued, and it went through a whole big process. And problems can get dropped. If a problem can't get solved, it can get pushed out by other events, or if it's somewhat faddish, something that people are concentrating on just for a minute and then move on to something else because people are fickle, it can get dropped from the agenda entirely. So... I wanted to discuss, even though I'm not there, you know, pause it, talk amongst yourselves, uh, talk about what focusing events influenced us. Because I don't think we got into politics for fun or we're doing it for some sort of personal gain. At least I don't think anyone in this class is. So what, what affected you? What made you want to get into policymaking? Was there an event that... Uh, got addressed and you didn't like the way it got addressed. And I would like to also talk about why some issues stick around and some don't. And we get a little bit of that um, in the end when we talk about joining the streams. But for me, um, a focusing event for me was my senior year of high school. My teachers went on strike um, from the Archdiocese of New York. And that really affected me because these were great teachers. They managed to renegotiate their contracts for another year, but after that, the archdiocese decided not to renew the contracts of the teachers who were in charge of the strike. So that was kind of my personal focusing event, um, just on a very small scale that got me thinking at kind of a young age, as 17, um, about labor and what what it means to be part of a union. So let's talk about the policy stream. I really like this one because um, the primeval soup I just think is really funny and cute. And King didn't name the stream primeval soup because he sees the melange of ideas that get swapped around as a kind of primordial swamp. Eventually life will emerge from this swamp but until we get the tiktaalik of policy we are stuck with the soup. Now that line is really funny if you know evolutionary biology. Tiktaalik was one of the first um, sea creatures that got itself up on land. So, Tiktaalik of policy, yeah. But, and this would be where we come in, hopefully at some point in the future. Specialists looking at problems and coming up with ways to solve them. But, as Kingdom points out, over-specialization can be an impediment to good policy. Uh, he calls it fragmentation, and it can be bad, because you should be able to look at all parts of a problem and accurately judge them, not just the one you know a lot about. Also, being unable to speak in layman's terms about your ideas and projects and like using the um, appropriate 
jargon is kind of gatekeeping. It keeps regular people out of your interest area, which is not good. And one of the downfalls of the soup atmosphere is the possibility of all ideas being taken seriously. It can be tiring, and there are ideas that just aren't worth taking seriously. Uh, one of the features of the soup is ideas get mixed around and recombinated to form new ideas. A Frankenstein's monster of ideas, if you will. But it can be helpful because maybe something in transportation is like something in health. Who knows? But it does take a long time for good ideas to make their way out of the soup. And my question here is, is the soup metaphor a really good one for the uh, environment of policy creation? As I have not yet been in the environment of policy creation, um, I don't really know. Uh, I don't. It, it sounds kind of incestuous, like people from this agency are d uh, discussing these ideas, and someone from another agency steals it, or they take a person and get this idea. I don't know, but I, I, I just don't know. So we have the politics stream, the national mood. How's everybody feeling? What's on the country's mind? Politicians don't have much motivation to address problems if their constituents are not bothered by them. Again, this is part of when is a problem a problem. Organized political forces like lobbying groups and special interest groups have influence on changing or maintaining the status quo. Heads of government organizations have a big say in what they address. Like if a very liberal person is the head of the FCC, we might not get many fines for indecency or language as we do when a more conservative person heads the organization. Uh, governments build consensus by bargaining. No one really ever gets everything they want, but politicians tend to build extreme positions and expect bargaining to move more towards the center. I think that's really pertinent today, you know, two days into the government shutdown. There's a lot of talk about bargaining and who should give on what, and it's, um, it's just a very kind of prescient topic. So here at the end of this, we have joining the streams. Unlike in Ghostbusters, where joining the streams means complete protonic reversal, here it means actually getting policy work done. Um, when you have a policy window open, you know, a time when policy is active and something can get done about a problem, we have the confluence of streams on the issue. Windows open when the political will is there. Changing administrations, a redistribution of congressional seats, or a focusing event or crisis are all ways that windows open and close. It's important for advocates of a cause to identify open windows and take the opportunity. But it's also realistic, it's also important for them to be realistic about the chances of change being made. Uh, someone in the book said that they really needed to consider how realistic their policy was, and otherwise it wasn't something they really wanted to waste their time on if they weren't going to be taken seriously. Um, Sometimes issues tag along on the tails of other issues uh, and can get repackaged solutions for different problems, which is pretty cool. Um, and Kingdon calls the people who take charge on policy and bring attention to legislation entrepreneurs. They tend to be people with strong personalities who are charismatic leaders and get people to follow them. Uh, those people in charge of the House, both Houses of Congress are probably people who would be considered policy entrepreneurs. I really like Ralph Nader. Um, he led the charge on auto safety. That's why we have seat belts and airbags. And even though he was never really in government, he's somebody who called attention to a problem and was able to use the force of his personality to create policy on it, to get people to pay attention to him and do his policy. Uh, windows can be predictable, like programs that have to get renewed every year for funding or they can be unpredictable, like crisis events. You can't always predict when government's going to be interested in something. Uh, policy gets made when the streams come together at the right time. If a policy is successful in one area, it might get applied to similar areas when their windows open, or having a policy made can't even create a window opportunity for a different policy. Um, I like Kingdon. I think that he really gives a good background and basis on... Uh, the study of policy analysis. I do think the book's a little outdated. You know, a lot of it's from the uh, 70s. Well, all of it is from the 70s. Um, but it's amazing. It, what really got me 
in this reading of it was how all of the healthcare talk was so similar to things that are happening right now, you know, 30 years after the book was written. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I have to say about Kingdom. <laughs>